So, I usually open up these videos with some paragraph kind of waxing poetic about something that leads into what I'm going to talk about, but today I, uh, I, got, I got nothing other than, hey, I recently was approved for monetization. Yeah, we're getting them YouTube pennies, buddy. So, what better way to celebrate my channel's new status than immediately making a video that will absolutely not be eligible for monetization? So, uh, like, subscribe, and help your boy out, because today, I want to talk about Prison School, a manga that there's absolutely nothing else like. So, Prison School is, well, kind of trash, but, but in a good way. I'd compare it to a golden dumpster. It may be shining brightly and look extremely pretty, got, got fucking gemstones on the rim and shit, but when you peek inside this glistening box, you see what you usually see inside of trash cans. Some fucking trash, just some straight garbage. But talk to any trash man or person who may have to dig through trash every once in a while and sometimes you can find some dank shit down there. So, as I sit here, manga completely finished and thinking about what rating I'd give the golden trash can that is prison school, well, both 2 out of 10 and 10 out of 10, it may be one of the best things I've ever read and also one of the worst? So for today's video, I want to break down my thoughts and both my love, hate, and everything in between with prison school because th there's a lot. Strap in and strap on because before we get into prison school, let's talk about Akira Hiramoto in the series he made that ran before prison school titled Me and the Devil Blues. Okay, well, to be fair, his first actual big hit series was titled Agonashi Gen to Ore Monogatari, about a 32-year-old loser named Gen who gets into wacky situations and ends up looking like a dumbass in short-form gag chapters that went on for 32 total volumes. It's definitely successful in its own right, for sure. But in my opinion, where that talent really started to show was in his 2003 series, Me and the Devil Blues, a story based on the legend of Robert Johnson. Now, for those who don't know, Robert Johnson is credited as being one of the most prolific and important musicians of all time, despite his actual recorded legacy being just a handful of songs. His style of playing for the time he was alive, both in the manga and real life, was completely unheard of for the 1920s and 30s. He only lived to be 27, one of the actual earliest members of the 27 Club, and was known to wander from place to place playing his unique style of blues wherever he went, with the name Me and the Devil Blues being one of his most popular song titles. The thing is though, there are multiple accounts from dozens of different people, both of the era and historians now in 2022, that claim it was common knowledge that old Robert J had sold his soul to the devil at a crossroads one night and became the best blues player of all time. Reports that people who knew him personally swore up and down he couldn't play a single tune until shortly after the death of his wife during childbirth where the baby also didn't survive, he became a local legend and eventually a historical figure for his abnormal skill, their death supposedly the price he was forced to pay for this talent. And this is where Hiramoto stepped in to make one of the most visually interesting and haunting things I've ever read. Yes, this entire video was actually a secret excuse to talk about Devil's Blues because I, I knew that video would flop otherwise. Don't worry, prison school in a minute, don't worry. Devil's Blues takes this legend and through Hiramoto's art, turns it into a beautiful horror story that feels like a panic attack mixed with a gritty fever dream. Almost every page feels so imposing and heavy. The amazing details on characters' faces mixed with the constant black shading creating such a strong sense of fear and uncertainty, mixed with the facial features and expressions that just hammer home the emotion of a scene directly to your core. It's a story about a man who sells his soul to the devil, and because of that, it takes the intensity of certain things up to another level because it all feels so dark. Like the story truly is at its core a horror manga, and has so many single shots and multi-page sequences that really stick with you from both how unsettling they are, but even more so, how fucking tense and hopeless they feel. The main plot does drift away fairly quickly from solely focusing on the musical aspect of RJ's deal, but his blues are always a constant part of the background tempo, his music shifting and warping the people that hear it into something almost otherworldly and evil, his style of music both loved and feared, 
letting Hiramoto draw these constant, absolutely fucking amazing sequences of RJ shredding the neck of his beat up old guitar with outstanding shading and this warped perspective on him and the world around as he plays, like the music is causing reality itself to shift and sway. And to add on top of the already heavy atmosphere created in the art, the story itself is about a black man in the 1920s where things were really fucking bad. And honestly, reading the story of a black man and the things he's forced to face through the lens of a Japanese artist in 2003 4-ish, it honestly feels really fair. Like, obviously I'm blurring the screen on here, but the series constantly makes use of racial slurs, with the main focus for a large chunk of the plot being RJ is going to be lynched for no actual reason other than to entertain a town of white people, but it never really felt derogatory in any intentional way. Now sure, I'm just some white dude reading a Japanese dude's story based on a real black guy, so who the fuck honestly cares what I think when it comes to these types of realistic topics? But outside of a design or two looking a bit stereotypical and the constant use of the hard R, it feels to me like Hiramoto really took these concepts and ideas extremely seriously and wanted to paint them in the actual horrific way that they were carried out with in real life. He never shies away from showing or saying actions that were common in this era, and it makes the impact of some scenes just hit way harder. Also, RJ teams up with Clyde from Bonnie and Clyde, and he's kind of like the secondary main character. D didn't know where else to slide that info in, but yeah, he's there too, meh. The thing about Devil's Blues, though, is that at 35 English translated chapters and 38 total chapters, uh, had to read the last few in Russian and guess the words, but we move regardless. It's been on and off hiatuses for years. Now, there's a lot of speculation online about these hiatuses, and that it paused and ended because it was poorly received and generated low interest from readers. The thing is though, there's almost no proof of this claim online other than people just saying it and repeating it, and the series itself has had chapters released in the past few years, its last one actually in 2017. As of 2021, the magazine the series was published in, Young Magazine the Third, has stopped running, so the manga currently exists in a licensing limbo. Now, I'm not saying these rumors of poor reception are 100% untrue, like hell I'd imagine a story of a black blues artist from America in the 1920s might not interest your average Japanese reader, but it's from this theory on cancellation that separate fan theories on the creation of Hiramoto's newly releasing series Prison School began to form, that being he was upset with his former stories failing and gave in to peer pressure from who I don't fucking know to make a fanservice-y gag manga. Whether that is the truth or not, and regardless of how anyone felt at the time, Prison School ended up being a whole lot more than just fanservice and gags, the popularity of the series quickly eclipsing any conversation about Devil's Blues. So, just a quick post-edit side note before we get in there. This video obviously had to be censored to hell and back because that's just how it goes. But, I do have a Patreon where I'm gonna be uploading this video with no censors on the riskier content. So, if you wanna peep that version, head over there and just hit the button for like 3 bucks and bam, you get to see the boobs linked down below. Anyway, let's get back in there. Prison School is basically the story of five boys and their struggle against expulsion in an unfair school system ran by an underground student council of women who hate all men with a brutal passion. It's also absolutely deranged, extremely funny, impressively beautiful, skin cringing, and just absolute garbage. Opening on the first day of school are five boys Shingo, Joe, Andre, Gact, and main character Kiyoshi, who are the first five boys that have been accepted into a formerly all-girl academy, are immediately caught trying to peek at the girls' locker room and tossed into a prison in the center of the school's courtyard. Ah, ah, there it is! And from there, things get... So, before we go into the plot of Prison School and why it's one of the most universally hated manga online now, let's talk about why it was so popular that as of 2018, it sold over 13 million copies and has launched the creator into international fame. Like I mentioned before with Devil Blues, Hiramoto has an amazing understanding of facial structure and shading. He's able to draw reactions that almost never feel reused for every one of his characters, who already all look so visually distinct themselves. Gak discovering Kiyoshi's plan is one of the most memorable pages from the whole series due to just how fucking intimidating and intense it's drawn, it doesn't matter if it's just a joke, 
and that in itself is massive reason number one why this manga was a hit, because despite the art looking like a fucking painting done by Zeus himself, it's being used to make dick piss and boo jokes while a character has to hide his boner, taking itself deathly serious as the vice president does immaculately drawn squats above Kiyoshi during his escape planning, his attempts almost thwarted because he saw some panties bouncing in his face. It's the idea that a character was just bitten by a poison snake while they're locked alone in a prison, and it's drawn with such realistic intensity, and the only way to survive is the 69 suck the poison out of each other's thighs before it's too late while the warden watching through the camera starts to kinda get off on it. Like, when you take Hiramoto's already phenomenal art, and it's combined with this outright stupid and horny story that's taking itself 110% serious, you end up with this perfect combination that elevates this dumbass drama to the next level through the characters and how they look and react to the things happening around them. It sounds weird to make this specific point, but a lot of the comedy and drama come from the masterful balancing act of action and reaction. It's a constant barrage of what outlandish and wild things he can draw next to make you feel all types of ways as you flip through pages, just like the character that's caught in this ridiculous situation. He has an amazing way of transitioning scenes through similar actions in both this and Devil's Blues. RJ playing his guitar as the moon begins to shine through it, giving it a certain foreboding feeling. Or when Hana rips Kiyoshi's pants down in the bathroom stall and the piss explosion cuts to Mako drinking from the fountain while uh, Hana screams in the distance. It's this great back and forth that lets him flow between different scenes and locations with ease. That's not even mentioning that outside of the distinctness of each character, the designs for them are all just fucking stellar in my eyes. More than just no one really looking similar at all, each person has traits about them that stand out and really make them feel like their own individual, and when you mix that over-the-top reaction ends with their designs and how they change throughout the story, it really helps make for a varied cast that I honestly enjoyed almost all of, like, a lot. Except Joe and Andre. Honestly, Shingo too. Those three can kind of fuck off. Of course, all this beautiful art and these 10 out of 10 character designs were to prop up what is, I mean, I don't know, probably the most important part of prison school? That being, of course, the fan service. So, this part's gonna be hard to talk about on here because I uh, can feel the YouTube goons creeping down my street right now, a like and subscribe help me out. But the thing that took Prison School to the next level of fame was easily its over-the-top and gratuitous amounts of sexual energy that Hiramoto constantly draws in the plot and the characters themselves. Hana and Kiyoshi's piss competition, the Boob Goldberg accidents, Vice President Mako in general, like, Prison School is one of the most outright and blatant multi-fetish things I've ever seen, thinly able to disguise itself by having major dramatic plot involved around these fetishes. A conversation can happen, and the dialogue bubble just points to tits and ass to imply that they said the dialogue, not even seeing the character's face for another few pages like entire chunks of this manga revolve around just being horny basically. And I kind of love it? Now there's plenty of series out there that, explicit sex aside, have strong stories that really drive the narrative and characters further, like these aren't two things that are mutually exclusive and have to exist separate from each other. But the reason the fan service in Prison School mixes so well with its plot, in my opinion, is because it's some of the most immaculate and carefully crafted fan service that I've ever seen. It's not about the fact that there's a boob shot, it's that the boob shot is drawn with the same love and care that a fucking berserk double page spread gets, but it's just for some dumbass joke about butts. The art on top of these situations that arise from the fan service make for legit amazing intense scenes where I can't stop flipping pages faster and faster because I, I gotta know if Hana is gonna piss on Kiyoshi right now. Like, don't get me wrong, it's trashy, but that doesn't take away from how fun it all is. It did run in a weekly magazine and Japan has their nudity laws, so the hardest it can go is some occasional nip slips, but using that limitation, Hiramoto fucking nails the whole less is more idea, where you absolutely don't need the full frontal 100% bare skin because all the parts are coming together to make such a grander whole. When you take this amazing art and this extremely fun fan service and combine it all together, 
it lays the foundation for the plot of Prison School that I partially mentioned earlier. And when it comes to the plot itself and where it takes these characters and their situations, well, honestly, there's a lot to say. So from this point, I'm not going to hold back on spoilers because to talk about why Prison School is worth reading, I have to also talk about why the entire internet kind of has a bad taste for it now, and honestly, for understandable reasons. Like I mentioned before, the main crux of the plot involves the five boys being sent to the school's prison by the Shadow Student Council for a month or face expulsion for the peeping of the girls' locker room, with the boys doing whatever they can to stay afloat and the Shadow Student Council president out to get them expelled. But there's a problem. Kiyoshi, the main boy, has a date with Chiyo-chan, the main love interest, and he's too busy being locked in prison to go. Well, there's only one solution. Prison break creating the first main thrust of the plot for around nine volumes or so, as Kiyoshi, and subsequently his friend and actual best character of the story Gak slash Gakuto depending on where you read, try and free him from the prison for a few hours so he can make his date. And uh, also grab Gak some Romance of the Three Kingdoms figures because there's always a Three Kingdoms guy in the friend group. The build up to this prison break and all of the obstacles Kiyoshi and Gakt have to overcome and submit themselves to, the constant shots of Mako being Mako, there's a reason she's the series mascot, Mari and her weird crow powers that kind of imply some slight supernatural elements maybe? The chairman was fucking hilarious and Hana was actual best girl, but m more on that later. And at the same time, it was taking itself so deadly serious that it didn't matter how absurd or horny it got, the drama was real, the stakes are real. Even if these dudes were absolute dipshits, you wanted them to win their battle over the Shadow Student Council, like, I remember when Kiyoshi went to leave through the escape hole that he had been digging for so many chapters now, and found it sealed up by random chance from the chairman, like, I literally dropped my volume in pain along with Kiyoshi's dropped jaw because, god damn it, that twist amplified the drama up by 800%. And that was just one single twist in the long line of subversion the plot pulls off. Also, just shout out the chairman in general, he was a really fun character whose dipshit obsession with asses and the understanding nature to the boys in their battle made for tons of great moments. Also, his delayed way of speaking is hilarious through the entire series. The actual problems of prison school, trashness aside, didn't come until after this prison break arc with the introduction of the above ground student council, and more specifically, the five boys exit from the prison. When Kate and Risa enter the story, who honestly are two characters I do like a lot, the overarching plot itself starts to weaken. Now, don't you fucking misunderstand me, that doesn't mean it's bad at all. Most parts still feel incredibly strong. The snakebite bathroom entanglement with Kyoshi and Mari, Kyoshi and Hana's like fourth or fifth piss scene, Gak dealing with his troubled times, Kyoshi trying to sneak the escape tools to the bathroom and Risa has to watch, PBR-sama blessed be his name, and honestly, everything in the battle between Kate and Mari is great and helps push the plot further and involve characters together in ways they couldn't before due to the former prisoner warden status and lets them unite for a common goal. Mari and the Shadow Student Council wanting to beat Kate and her team at her prison mind games and keep their underground spots, and Kiyoshi and the boys needing Mari to win so the school's fabled wet t-shirt contest goes off with no issues, and it follows these threads through the middle chunk of the series. But, at the same time, Joe, Andre, and Mako's characters kind of take a dive off a cliff in the worst way. Joe never really had much to begin with outside of his love for ants, but his first major thing out of the prison being I gotta sexually assault someone ASAP and get back in jail was kinda lame, and he never really improves from it. Andre, whose only real trait is he's a giant masochist that likes being abused, just spends half the series now running around doing literally nothing, like, like actually nothing. Then he becomes a goddamn beast the size of a semi, but that's another discussion. Even worse, Risa, whose design is a hard 10 out of 10 in my eyes, gets stuck with him, and yeah, I, I absolutely hate that choice. But what was honestly the weirdest thing for me, the actual cause of the new Andre issues in general, was Mako. The vice president is easily the most famous thing from prison school, so when she spent over half the series in some catatonic regressed state that was just an excuse for her to say, don't look at my boobies, over and over while sweating and crying profusely, her former badass and headstrong traits traded for this submissive and terrified trope, it was a major letdown. A letdown that honestly lasted a majority of the series. 
It felt like a gag that was going on way too long. And that was kind of becoming exactly the problem with Prison School as it went on. By this point, even with the standout moments, the plot was beginning to weaken over time and started to feel like a joke that kind of wouldn't end. A lot of the major drama had started to just kind of fade away if it wasn't connected to Kiyoshi and Mari inside of the prison. The battle between the two groups beginning the lead up to the school festival shoulder battle, which as any prison school fan knows, was its own massive problem. The student council shoulder battle is, in my opinion, everything that's wrong with prison school jammed into a single arc. It's bloated, it's pacing feels non-existent at times, it cuts away from the actual progression non-stop to show the chairman who's on some random adventure somewhere in the woods that, that really just feels like Hiramoto forgot that character existed and made an entirely pointless arc for him to kind of fill time and chapters while he dragged the main battle out further for whatever reason. I mentioned earlier that he was a master of transition between pages, but it almost kind of feels super forced at this point due to needing to transition to this whole side plot with the chairman that just seemed to exist for no reason, with the actual shoulder battle itself going for chapters and chapters on end, with no actual progression in the match itself. Leading into this battle though, there were a few events of the day that still had really enjoyable moments in them. The race between Hana and Risa that gives backstories on how they came to join their own respective councils. Hana and Mari teaming up in the past together in service of the school, with Hana growing to respect Mari's strange but unbreakable personality. And Kate standing up for Risa who at one point had massive anxiety and just could not speak for herself, becoming her first actual real friend. And of course, the entire piss explosion in Kiyoshi's room while he and Hana had to avoid getting caught under the covers by Chio and Gact, creating some of that trademark insane dramatic tension the series is really masterful at, while also setting up tons of events to come later, both good and bad. While not necessarily being as non-stop thrilling as earlier, these were still good little moments here and there for the characters, and it almost did feel like these arcs had to be coming to their conclusions. But as soon as the actual climatic battle began, right around chapter 200 or so, for each chapter that felt like a step forward, there were four more that felt like nothing really happened except a boner joke or a panties gag. Now, fan service and art can carry you for a really long way, but here at this point when no progress is being made in the plot to match that energy, it just starts to fall flat. 40 chapters of barely any development, 40 weeks of nothing really happening, and the actual end of the battle itself being, well, unfortunately, kinda just a joke that felt like an excuse to bring the chairman back into the school somehow and end this ridiculous back and forth that Hiramoto had written himself into. It was a bad joke that, just like other conclusions for major parts of the series, were slowly starting to unravel the entire thread. It was at this point that Prison School's already declining fanbase started to tank pretty hard. So up until now, I've not mentioned it too much, but while leading into this battle in the manga, over here in the real world, Prison School was riding incredibly high from success. Massive volume sales, multiple figure runs that cost hundreds now, hell, it even got a live action movie too. It's bad! It had quickly become an internet meme, with pages from the manga popping up non-stop all over that I had seen hundreds of times and had no idea it was from Prison School until actually reading it. And I mean, let's be real, it's the internet. Of course they would flock to a series that looked this good, had fan service this good, and seemed legitimately funny as shit. Most famously, of course, from this popularity was the 12 episode anime season made by JC Staff, who now in 2022 kinda catch a lot of shit for having some of the more poorly adapted anime from manga, but that doesn't mean their catalog is all misses, not by a fucking long shot. And with Prison School, honestly, I think it's a solid job. The animation is fairly consistent and sometimes does really cool things to skirt around their limitations, like the scene with the Lego escape plans, like they didn't have to go that extra mile there for a fairly simple scene, but it really helps elevate the anime to the next level while also making a really unique story stand out in your mind for having unique scenes. The facial expressions and wild energy from the manga still feels really faithful to the source, even if they have been condensed down a bit for time and pacing. The OP is an absolute banger that stays in my head, and the English dub is pretty good in my opinion. 
takes a few liberties with the dialogue, sure, shout out Looney Tunes Andre, but as someone who can be a little critical of more modern dubs, eh, whatever, it is what it is, I really like this one, I give it a big thumbs up. And of course, the big question that most fans of the manga would have when it comes to this, how intense is the censorship of the fan service? Which, I mean, yeah, it was on TV, you gotta do what you gotta do. It doesn't shy away from a lot of things, honestly. I was super surprised when they showed Hana's whole ass on frame. But it does have these bars that kinda censor the hyper-overt content. Uh, what can you do? It is what it is. The Blu-ray release does remove all of the white lines and goes full frontal. You can find a copy in America off Amazon for like 20 bucks. But I do think all of the streaming versions of the show, like on Hulu and shit, are all censored. You can, you can find it out there, you know what to do. While Hiromoto's art is probably always going to be my preferred way of experiencing the series, this anime, for what it is and what it's trying to adapt, is really solid and I give it a big thumbs up. I defo recommend it. My honestly positive recommendation aside though, there was a problem. It ended at 12 episodes, teasing a potential next season to continue after the boys leave prison. Some anime fans migrated to the manga to continue, but you know how that goes. Most anime fans just stayed waiting for that second season. The series was riding high on this popularity wave and fans were eating good in the neighborhood on prison school content, until the lead up to and subsequent shoulder battle in the manga and the second season of the anime never actually being announced. A large loss of anime only fans with no new anime in sight, and those boring 70-ish chapters ending, you're left with the last 30 chapters or so, which is a whole controversy in itself. So I haven't talked too much about the romance aspect of Prison School because it's usually completely overshadowed by the fan service and the main plot, but as the story has flowed on, many characters have had romantic interests that have been slowly building, with Kiyoshi's being the final focus of the series. For a main protagonist that's carrying the weight of this ridiculous story and now the final romantic conclusions, I honestly think that Kiyoshi is a really solid lead. Despite his absolute degenerate dipshit nature, he has tons of moments where he legitimately oozes a cool confidence, even if it's just total bullshit, and he's constantly acknowledged by the people he's facing down. He shows actual care for his friends when they sure as fuck don't deserve it and goes to extreme lengths way beyond what any regular person would do for his own planned success, and it honestly does reflect on him in a positive way because of how confident and forward thinking it makes him seem, despite, you know, dipshit. So the buildup for his eventual relationship conclusions does feel legitimately nail biting. It's a lot of the side cast that kinda felt extremely lacking in this aspect. Shingo and Anzu have an on-again, off-again thing that kinda really goes nowhere and Anzu just gets left behind in the story in general. Andre has been caught in the middle of his mistresses for a majority of the series and now has to make his final choice, and honestly speaking, the romance between Risa and Andre has probably been one of the most consistent through the whole series and actually has multiple developments along the way, so I have to acknowledge it for that, but my dislike of Andre kind of makes the whole thread fall flat for me personally, but it is good, I, I can admit that. Gact and Mitsuko have had great chemistry, and Mitsuko is actually really charming despite her doing like nothing in the grand scheme of things, but I gotta say, the box delivery scene with him and Slut Senpai, yes that is her name, fucking rules and reminds me here at the very end why Prison School was such a consistent banger in those early chapters. Kiyoshi's text to Mitsuko is he's a delivery service man, Gak sliding the money out and asking for an extension, and the page turning tension from what was going on down inside that box was a good reminder of what Hiromoto could do and be so amazing at creating. Gak slash Gakuto was extremely popular with fans of the series for super good reasons too, so he kept getting great stuff as the chapters went on and this new surge of popularity with women felt like the reward of that real life love despite his actual romantic ending with Mitsuko and Sluts on too, kind of just fizzling out and going nowhere. Uh, Joe also has cake son, I guess, but whatever. Joe feels like an afterthought if it isn't about ants until that gets dropped, or he isn't trying to just sexually assault someone. Oh, and President Mari just decides to drop out and leave school, heads to an airport, Mako and Kate rush to go find her, end up at the wrong airport and don't actually find her, and that's the end of those three characters' stories. Uh, I, 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 I.
But last and tied for fucking least, the most disappointing because it's what's supposed to be the main romantic focus of the story, I guess, and after all the buildup I mentioned for Kiyoshi to make him a strong lead, the actual relationship between Kiyoshi and Shio? It's just barely anything, while the actual real romance of the series kinda comes from another angle, one that both me and from what I've read online a lot of fans agree is the smarter path, that being Kiyoshi and Hana. There's no real grandstanding reason or long list of points to make where it's worth arguing about what character should have won the Kiyoshi Bowl. It's more just, for the main romantic plot, the two characters who were in those roles had barely any actual meaningful screen time together for, like, the entire series. Meanwhile, Kiyoshi does share literal dozens of chapters in romantic situations with his piss partner Hana Best Girl. And th that's it. Just a matter of Chio barely being a thing sometimes, and Hana being right there nonstop with Kiyoshi, developing their relationship on screen the entire time. Now, this isn't to like undermine Chio as an enjoyable character at all. She's honestly really good. In a story of degenerate shitbags, she's almost one of the only consistently pure people in the school. She's cute, thick headed, and a really good person and friend in general the entire time. It's just a shame that there aren't a lot of those moments with her, and even less in general when it comes specifically to her and Kiyoshi. So of course, the final plot point is about Kiyoshi confessing his love to Chio, while Hana has to lose to the main character's romantic interest. Hana, refusing to accept this loss, kinda just breaks the fuck down and tells Chio every single detail about her and Kiyoshi's piss based relationship, to which Chio still accepts as being fine, stating her mutual love for Kiyoshi, before ending on basically a gag where Hana rips Kiyoshi's pants off to reveal he's wearing Hana's panties from earlier in the story, he could no longer hold his piss and explodes all over Chio's face, and it hard cuts to the final page of her being the new Shadow Student Council leader, looking rather evil from the piss incident. And uh, th that's it! 10 million plus volumes sold later, the entire drama of the plot and story itself ended on a piss-based gag with no conclusions for anything but Risa and Andre, I guess. Manga over, good night. And from what I can tell, not a single fucking person in existence was happy. Before even starting prison school, all I ever saw non-stop online was memes, Mako, and people saying, holy shit, worst ending ever, I hate the series now, 2 out of 10, don't read. And I mean, I get it. 276 chapters later, the entire story had literally built up to a piss joke with no real meaningful end at all. Kiyoshi and presumably no one else getting happy endings, hell they barely even got endings in general. Fans felt kind of betrayed. They gave a series their time and attention and money, and it ended how it did. Personally? Eh, yeah, it's a bad ending, I can't lie. I, I closed the volume and kind of just sat back and stared at the wall for like five minutes processing. But outside of it being a lame ending, I honestly don't really mind. Here at the end of the day, as I was writing the script and re-looking at the art and getting small bits and pieces of the story again and again to cut out these panels that you've been seeing, I can't fucking help it, man. I still think Prison School may be like an 8 or a 9 for me, only ruined by the boring shoulder battle and the very flat last chapter that has no real resolution. Maybe it's because I went into it knowing its ending was extremely hated and I was warned beforehand. Maybe it's because so many things have flat endings that I kinda just expect it now. But for me, it's absolutely impossible to say I hate or even dislike Prison School. There's just too much lovable garbage for me to actually worry about the legit smelly trash. Hiramoto himself is a super reclusive guy with not a lot of interviews and info about him floating around, so no one is 100% sure why Prison School ended the way it did. Now I've seen the idea that the series was about perverts and that perverts shouldn't win at the end, which kinda honestly does tie into one of Kiyoshi's first conversations with Chio. I've seen that it was payback for Devil's Blue's failure and that he really wanted to work on that, but people preferred his other series more and here we are. 
I've seen that people say he just is a bad writer and didn't know what to do here at the end. Personally? Yeah, yeah, I got no fucking clue. Bleh. But between Devil Blues and a large portion of prison school, saying his writing is bad? I disagree. Nah, I fucking disagree heavy with I that. Disagree, his yeah. next series, Raw Hero, began like almost immediately after the end of prison school, leading some fans to think he may have rushed the end of one series to start another. Now, I haven't read Raw Hero yet, so I have no clue on its quality despite hearing mixed things online, but I believe it ended in 2020, so it's totally completed if you want to just give it a go. Oh, and in 2022, he began a new series called Futari Switch. Haven't read it either, though. Oh, last minute edit, last minute edit. He apparently is making a new rom-com horror series with the author of Blue Lock, not the artist, the author. He's doing the story and Hiramoto is just doing the art. It's titled Superball Girls. Yeah, sure, sounds raw to me, I'm fucking down, whatever. Anyway, this was supposed to just be some quick video that I was able to get out in like a month so I could work on some other things, but I don't know, I guess I like prison school more than I thought because the words just kept flowing and now after writing this video, I kinda wanna read Raw Hero because I'm missing Hiramoto's dumbass writing. Even taking a subpar chunk of the story towards the end and the universally disliked ending into account, would I recommend Prison School to you, the viewer? I mean, I, I, yeah, I I guess. If you like garbage like me, I'd say give it a go. No matter what, you'll walk away with something, whether it's an appreciation of the impressive art, the adrenaline from the intense story and drama, or even a new fetish, Prison School has it all. Also, for real, read me in the Devil Blues, and can someone please translate those last few chapters to English, please? That'd be really cool. Sorry this video took so long to get out. Uh, apparently, I gave myself carpal tunnel in both of my hands from going so hard on the Bleach video every day without ever really stopping until I just couldn't use the mouse anymore. So I needed some time off to try and recover because my shit was busted. Doing better now, Bloody trying to be smarter much. about my limits. Anyway, remember to sub to your boy and hit that Patreon maybe because this video was risky as shit, but whatever, I kind of wanted to do it regardless. See you next time.